What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. Some of my students told me they had some problems with the proficiency writing part. In today's English bit, I'm going to give you some pointers on how to write a good essay, which is the first and compulsory part in the exam. Are you ready? So, let's get started. First of all, I'm going to tell you the structure of today's video. Firstly, I'm going to tell you what the first task is like. Secondly, we're going to see how this part is assessed. Then, in the third part of this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to write a good essay. Then, in the fourth part, I'm going to give you some useful phrases to start and finish your essay. Then, we're going to learn some useful lingers that you can use in your essay. And to finish, I'm going to suggest an action plan to improve your writing skills and produce a great essay. In the description box, you can find timestamps so that you can go directly to that part of the video you're most interested in. And to let you know that in the upcoming months, I'm planning to make more videos focused on the proficiency exam preparation, as well as other official exams by Cambridge. So if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the bell. So let's get down to business and start with the first part of this video where I'm going to explain what the first task is like. So in the first part of the writing exam, you have to write an essay. It's a compulsory part. And you need to write between 240 and 280 words. And you have more or less 45 minutes to do this task. As in total, you're given one hour and a half to write two pieces of writing. In the first part of your writing exam, you have two texts of approximately 100 words each that you need to summarize, evaluate and include your own ideas. The text can present contrasting or complementary views on a topic. And the difference is that in the proficiency exam, you need to identify the four key points on your own. And like in the first or CAE exams, where you were given the points to cover in your essay. So it's a little bit more complicated. As you see, I have underlined the key points in these texts. Now let's move on to the second part of this video, where we're going to see how the writing exam is assessed. So basically, there are four assessment scales. The first one is content. So here, the examiners are going to evaluate if you have done everything you are asked. If you have identified the four key points correctly and if the content is relevant to the task. Also, if you have added your own ideas and examples, because it's not just about summarizing both texts, but providing your ideas. And ultimately, if the reader is fully informed. The second criterion is communicative achievement. Here, the examiners are going to assess if the register of your essay is appropriate. It's usually an academic writing style. If you can express complex ideas of a more abstract nature. Also, if you can hold the reader's attention with ease and basically if your writing is appropriate for the task. The third scale is organization. Here, the important things are if the structure is clear, logical and well organized, if your paragraphs are balanced, of more or less the same length, and if you use a wide range of good linkers. And the last scale is language, and it's if you use a wide range of good vocabulary and grammar structures. So in each assessment scale, you can get five points maximum, which means that in the first part you can get 20 points and in the second part 20. So in total there are 40 points 
and to pass the proficiency writing exam, you need to get 24 points, which means that in each scale uh, you need to get 3 points out of 5. So now let's move on to the third part of this video, where I'm going to give you some tips on how to produce a good essay. My first word of advice is to read very carefully both texts to identify the four key points. Unlike in the first and the CAI exams, in the proficiency exam, you need to find the main points on your own. After finding the four key points, you need to decide how far you agree with these points. The third tip would be to list some relevant ideas of your own. And after that, you need to plan your essay. So think how many paragraphs you're going to have. There are usually four or five paragraphs. And you also need to think what the purpose of each paragraph is. And it's also important to say that there isn't just one way to plan your essay and there are lots of different approaches. For example, you can have the intro in the first paragraph. In the second paragraph, you can summarize the first text and give your own ideas and examples. Then in the third paragraph, you can do the same with the second text summarizing, evaluating and giving your ideas. And then in the fourth paragraph, you can give your final opinion and you can conclude your essay. This is one possibility, but there are many, many different ways to plan your essay. But it's really, really important to think how many paragraphs you're going to write. After planning your essay, the next step is to make a list with interesting vocabulary you can use in your essay. So think and write down what collocations or fixed phrases you can use. Also write down a few idioms, interesting adjectives, linkers, and don't forget to use synonyms. It's really important not to repeat the same words and be able to paraphrase. So after making the list with interesting vocabulary, we need to do the same with grammar structures. So think if you could use an opening question to engage the reader's attention. Or maybe you could use conditionals or passive forms, or relative clauses, or you could use what clauses. For example, you can start your sentence with what. For example, what is normal for one set of people may appear rude to another group. Maybe you could use an inversion or the structure the, the. For example, the more you study, the better your results will be. Or you can also start one of your sentences with much as, for example, much as it's enjoyable to spend time at home, we also need to meet with our friends. Another piece of advice is not to copy the whole segment from the text, but be able to paraphrase and use synonyms. Remember that you can write a title. It's not compulsory, but in my case, I prefer having a title and I recommend writing it after finishing your essay. Also remember to give examples and justify your point of view because the task is not about just summarizing both texts, but it's really important to provide your own ideas and examples. It's essential in this part. In the exam, you're given a draft paper that you can use to brainstorm your ideas, to plan your essay, to make a list with interesting vocabulary and grammar structures. But my recommendation is to start writing your essay after having done all the previous work directly in your answer sheet, because as you have just 45 minutes, you won't have time to write first in a draft paper and then to copy everything. So you have to be quick, so plan everything, brainstorm, make lists and then write your essay. 
and remember that uh, you're not allowed to use tipex in the exam so if you make a mistake just cross it out and when you finish remember to go over your essay for punctuation and spelling make sure that everything is correct and accurate okay so now let's move on to the fourth part of this video where i'm going to give you some useful phrases that you can use to start and to finish your essay first let's look at some phrases that you can use in your introduction i'm going to read some of my suggestions for example you can start your essay by writing the text consider the role of something for example teachers in preparing future generations or you can write the text consider the importance of memories or consider the negative effect of social networks you can also say both texts identify for example the problem of unemployment or the two texts discuss the pros and cons of advertising to young people or the two texts contrast different views of something if uh, the texts are different and don't contain the same idea for example you can also say the two texts contain opposing points of view with regard to the issue of something another recommendation the first text suggests that or views something positively or is concerned with or according to the first passage whatever then when you start talking about the second text you can say in contrast the second text raises the issue of something or in contrast the second text puts forward whatever or outlines how or claims that asegura or argues that or makes the point that you can also write the writer is of the opinion that and my last suggestion is the second text is possibly more contentious the meaning of contentious is likely to cause disagreement and now i'm going to give you some phrases that you can use in your conclusion for example you can start your last paragraph by writing all things considered i strongly believe that we should do something or for example to conclude it's my opinion that whatever or you can also write in conclusion there are uncountable reasons to or there is no doubt in my mind that and my last recommendation is while it may be the case that i feel that so i think that these sentences can really help you to start and to finish your essay in a good way okay so now let's move on to our fifth part of the video where i'm going to give you some linkers that you can use throughout your whole essay it's really important to use a wide range of linkers both at the beginning of your paragraphs and inside so let's start with the first group sequence you can start your second paragraph by writing first and foremost or for example you can just say firstly or first of all secondly lastly or finally the second group is generalizing and you can write in general or on the whole it's often said that it's usually the case that the reality is that or as a rule whatever okay let's move on to raising an argument you can say for example considering something or on the question of for example advertising 
or no one would dispute whatever okay now let's look at how you can give one side for example you can write one argument in favor of this is or in support of whatever or it's true that to give the other side you can use the following blinkers you can write at the same time or in contrast to this is not to say that eso no quiere decir que or nonetheless which means despite this or set against this is another one be that as it may or the last one but it might also be that okay let's continue if you want to add something you can write additionally or foremost in addition moreover or you can use an inversion for example not only is or was something but also something different remember that if you start with not only you have to use first a verb and then a subject for example not only was the room dirty but it was also tiny let's move on to specifying for example you can write from somebody's point of view it can be from my point of view or from the writer's point of view or you can say from the author's point of view you can also write in terms of something for example in terms of education or as far as something is concerned for example as far as traffic is concerned or you can also write with respect to something for example with respect to the use of new technologies to give examples uh, you can write take for instance or given that take the area of for instance for example or one definite advantage of something is or one definite disadvantage of something is whatever now some linkers to express your attitude for example you can write to my mind personally obviously presumably es de suponer, to tell the truth from my point of view there is little to disagree with to show the result uh, you can use thus por consiguiente or consequently okay now let's move on to equation for example you can write equally likewise similarly in the same way or by the same token now let's focus on quantity so it's uh, a good idea not just to use a lot of but uh, some alternatives which could be a great deal of something with uncountable nouns be careful for example it takes a great deal of courage or hard work and if you want to use countable nouns you would use a large number of for example a large number of students or cars you can also use to some extent for example we all suffer to some extent from stress or another possibility would be to a large extent which means greatly for example we are often stressed to a large extent because of new technologies okay now let's move on to some linkers that you can use to show contrast for example you can say on the one hand whatever and then your following paragraph can start with on the other hand something completely different you can also use whereas and while also however and nevertheless also although be careful after although you need to use a clause a subject plus a verb plus object 
or you can also use even though. Another possibility is to use contrary to and despite the and in spite of. Be careful here. If you have a noun or gerund, you use despite the, for example, despite the rain. Or um, you can say in spite of being tired, which would be okay. But be careful here. If you want to use a clause, you would need to add the fact that. For example, despite the fact that it was raining or in spite of the fact that it was raining. So don't forget the fact that if you write a clause, a subject and a verb. Also, you can use in comparison with, in comparison with the second text, for example. And to finish this part, we're going to look at some linkers that you can use to summarize your essay and include in your last paragraph. For example, you can write in short or to conclude or to sum up. Or another possibility is to introduce an ending. And I want to highlight that it's important to use a comma after your lingers. For example, on the one hand, comma, or in my opinion, comma, or to conclude, comma. Okay, so remember to use a comma after your lingers. Okay, and now let's move on to the last part of this video where I'm going to suggest an action plan to follow in order to improve your writing skills. My first recommendation is to watch the video made by Cambridge English where they give some good tips on how to perform well in the writing part of the exam. You can find the link in the description box. My second recommendation is to download the teacher's handbook and read some sample essays and examiner's comments. You can find all the links in the description box. Also, guys, I want to share with you some of my sample essays which I wrote when I was preparing the proficiency exam. I'm going to leave the link that you can use to download them and I hope you find them useful. My fourth recommendation would be not to write your essay on a computer but on a piece of paper in order to simulate the exam conditions. And also set the time limit, for example, 45 minutes to write an essay. Another tip would be to find somebody who can correct your writings and uh, to, to check them and to give you some corrections. I think it's really important to improve. And to finish, my last recommendation would be to read as much as you can. You can read books, newspapers, magazines, whatever you like, but it really helps and it can improve your writing skills a lot. So I really hope you found this English bit useful and it can help you perform better in the proficiency writing part. I made another video on the proficiency exam where I give general recommendations on each part of the exam and you can check it out right there. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to our channel as we make one video every week. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao!